Hello everyone, welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today, in this episode of Snoozat Questions with Solution, we're going to be looking at some sample questions which were asked in chemistry for previous episode, previous editions of the Snoozat exam. So, Snoozat is an entrance exam that is, you know, helpful in achieving admission at Shivnadar University and they have various subjects such as aptitude, physics, chemistry, mathematics, etc. So today we're going to be looking at some questions of chemistry. Now note that these are sample questions and they are similar in pattern to the examination. Let's look at our first question. What temperature is 75 degrees Fahrenheit on the Kelvin scale? Now this is a question from some basic concepts of chemistry so there they start teaching you about temperatures and you know the laws of chemistry etc so now we have to convert a temperature in degree Fahrenheit on the Kelvin scale so how do we solve this question well we know that we can convert degree Fahrenheit to degree Celsius and we also know that from degree Celsius you can easily convert the temperature to degree Kelvin so the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit is 9 by 5 times the temperature in degrees Celsius plus 32. So now we know the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. So that's 75 equals 9 by 5 times the temperature in degrees Celsius. We don't know it. So let's consider that to be X plus 32. Now let's take 32 to the other side. So therefore 9 by 5 X equals 75 minus 32. 75 minus 32, 5 minus 2 is 3, 7 minus 3 is 4. So 43 is 9 by 5 times x. So therefore x will now be equal to 43 times 5 by 9 because if you have a fraction taken to the right hand side it's basically the fraction was multiplied to x and when you take it to the right hand side it becomes divided the fraction is goes into the denominator but 1 by a fraction is basically the reciprocal of the same fraction. So 9 by 5x equals 43 would mean that x equals 43 times 5 by 9. So let's multiply 43 by 5. 5 threes are 15, 4 fives are 20, 20 plus 1 is 21. So 215. So x will be 215 divided by 9. Well, let's start dividing then. 215 divided by 9. 9 times 2 gives you 18. 21 minus 18 is 3. And then there's and then you bring down 5. So 9 times 3 is 27. 9 times 4 is 36. So we put 3 here. 9 times 3 is 27. 35 minus 27 is 8. And then when you put in a point, you can add zeros afterwards. So you have 80, so 9 times 8 gives you 72, 9 times 9 gives you 81, so 80 minus 72 equals 8. So you can, so you now basically have a continuation of the number 8 as we divide further. So the value of x is 23.8888 and so on. So we can now cap that as 23.9 using estimation. Now, we know that the temperature in degrees Celsius is 23.9 degrees Celsius. So the temperature in degrees Kelvin will be 23.9 degrees Celsius plus 273. The, temp the Celsius scale is based on the boiling and freezing point of water. The boiling point of water is at 100 degrees Celsius. Freezing point is at 0 degrees Celsius. However, the Kelvin scale is based on absolute zero, which is minus 273 degrees Celsius. So therefore, any temperature in degrees Kelvin will be 273 plus the temperature in degrees Celsius. So now we have 273 plus 23.9. So 0 plus 9 gives you 9. 3 plus 3 gives you 6. 7 plus 2 gives you 9. 2 plus 0 gives you 2. So you have 296.9 degrees Kelvin as the exact temperature 
which is equal to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, among our options, it is seen that option C, 297 degrees Kelvin, is the closest to 296.9 degrees Kelvin. So basically, you know, you can estimate that. So 296.9 can be is close enough to 297. So therefore, the most appropriate option among the following is option C, 297 degrees Kelvin. All the other options are incorrect because 348 would mean it will be greater than 23 degrees Celsius. So that means it will be greater than 75 degrees Kelvin. 24 degrees Kelvin and 215 degrees Kelvin will be less than 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So therefore, the correct answer is option C, 297 degrees Kelvin. Now, the next question. The energy of one quantum of light with a wavelength of seven, I mean 6,500 angstroms is. So this is another question of chemistry. This is from atomic chemistry, atomic structure. So that depends. So that, so in that part we learn about the photoelectric effect and energy of quanta of light. So energy in the quantum theory is E equals h nu, where h is the Planck's constant and nu stands for the frequency. Now frequency can be written as c by lambda where c is the speed of light in vacuum and lambda stands for the wavelength. So therefore the value of E can be written as h C divided by a lambda. So the energy will now be the value of H is a since H is Planck's constant, the value will always be 6.625 into 10 raised to minus 34. So 6.625 into 10 raised to minus 34 times the speed of light in vacuum, which is 3 into 10 raised to 8. Again, this is an approximate value, which is helpful for calculations. The exact speed is go, it actually is, you know, it ranges to the decimals. So it's close enough to three into 10 raised to eight, so we can use that. And divided by the wavelength, the wavelength here is 6,500 angstroms. So basically that means it'll be 6,500 into 10 raised to minus 10 meters. So since one centimeter is 10 raised to minus two meters, so it should be 10 raised to minus eight centimeters, but they get, that was due to a typing error. So one angstrom is equal to 10 raised to minus 10 meters. So the denominator will be 6,500 into 10 raised to minus 10 meters. Now we can see that there are a lot of orders in here. So we'll first simplify all those orders into one. So we have three times 6.625 divided by 6,500 times 10 raised to minus 34 plus eight. And then since the minus 10 is in the denominator, that will be plus 10. So you get three times 6.625 divided by 6,500 into It'll be 34 minus 18. So 14 minus 8 is 6. 2 minus 1 is 1. So 10 raised to minus 16. Now 6.625 can be written as 6625 divided by 1000. So therefore the value of energy will now be 3 into 6625 divided by 6500 into 10 raised to minus 16 minus 3 so that's minus 19. So the order here is 10 raised to minus 19. Now if you look at our options you can see that option C automatically becomes the right answer because the orders of options A, B and D are incorrect. It's 10 raised to minus 20, 10 raised to minus 20 and 10 raised to minus 24 here. Now at first glance that can be correct but then suppose after dividing the numerator and denominator we get B or D correct then that can make our answer incorrect. So from now on we're just comp 
confirming that 3.06 into 10 raised to minus 19 joules is the correct answer. Well, first we have to multiply. So 6625 times 3. 5 times 3 is 15. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. 6 times 3 is 18. 1 goes here. 6 times 3 is 18. 18 plus 1 is 19. So 19875 divided by 6500 into 10 raised to minus 19 will now be our answer. So let's start dividing. 19875 divided by 6500. So let's try 6500 into 3. So 0, 0, 5 threes are 15. 1 goes up. 6 threes are 18. 18 plus 1 is 19. So it's 19500. That is 6500 times 3. If we were to you know, multiply further, it will be greater than the numerator. So 3 will be part of the quotient. So 19500. So 5 minus 0 is 5, 7 minus 0 is 7, 8 minus 5 is 3, and then 19 minus 19 is 0. So 375. Now, we can't divide 375 by 6500, so therefore we'll put a point, so then we can keep adding zeros. We add one zero, that's not enough. So we'll put a zero in the quotient, then we'll add another zero. So that's 37500. Now, let's try 6 because we already have a guess that 3.06 is the answer. So 6500 times 6. So 0, 0, 5, 6 to 30. 6, 6 to 36. 36 plus 3 is 39. However, as you can see, it's greater than the numerator. I mean, greater than what we need here. So therefore, we'll just subtract 6,500. So 0, 0, 10 minus 5 is 5, 8 minus 6 is 2, and then 3. So 3, 2, 5, double 0 is what we should be getting. So 3.05 min will, will now be our quotient, and 3, 2, 5, double 0. So 0, 0, 5 minus 5 is 0, 7 minus 2 is 5. 3 minus 3 is 0. So now we have 5,000. But 5,000 doesn't go, can't be divided by 6,500, so we'll just put another 0. So 50,000. So we can take it as, you know, 6,500 times 9. So that's 0, 0, 5, 9 is 45. Six nines are fifty four. Fifty four minus, I mean, fifty four plus four is fifty eight. So five eight five double zero. But then that's greater than that. So six five double zero. Zero 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 eight minus six is two. That's fifty two. So sixty five hundred times eight is also greater. So three point zero five seven is what we get. So the final answer that we get is 3.057 into 10 raised to minus 19. Now, let's, you know, simplify this. So, we see that 7 is greater than 5. So, the odd number that's 5 here can be raised to 6. So, 3.06 into 10 raised to minus 19 is indeed the correct answer. So therefore, option C, 3.06 into 10 raised to minus 19 joules, is the correct answer. All we had to do was use E equals HC by a lambda, put in the values, and then do some arithmetic. And we didn't have to do it all the way. When we got that it was 10 raised to minus 19 joules, all we had to do was look at the correct option containing 10 raised to minus 19 joules, and that le led us to option C being correct. The other steps were just to confirm that that is the answer. Let's look at the last question of this episode. This one's comparatively simple. The nuclear radius as compared to the atomic radius is the order of 10 raised to minus 2, 10 raised to minus 15, 10 raised to minus 14, 10 raised to minus 8. So for this particular question, we're just going to be looking at the order of both the nuclear radius and the atomic radius. 
So the nuclear radius is smaller than the atomic radius. The nuclear radius is of the order 10 raised to minus 14. And the atomic radius is of the order 10 raised to minus 10. So if you were to compare the nuclear radius and atomic radius, all we have to do is divide 10 raised to minus 14 by 10 raised to minus 10. So that will be equal to 10 raised to minus 14 plus 10, which is equal to 10 raised to minus 4. So therefore, the correct answer among the following will be option C. Remember, the question is asking us the nuclear radius as compared to the atomic radius. So we have to remove the order of the atomic radius from the, the, the actual order of the nuclear radius in order to get our answer. So option C, 10 raised to minus 14 is the correct answer. So that concludes this episode of SnooSat Preparation. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, which is Brain Blitz Audios. For more of our useful and interesting content, just hit the notifications button that's present below the video. If you want to learn more about SnooSat, then please hit the playlists link that's present in the description box below. So until the next episode, take care, stay safe, bye-bye for now.